Good morning, fellow students, faculty, staff, alumni, donors. I am Claire Hansen, a fourth year English student who is graduating with Bachelor of Arts this spring. My time at CMU has been a whirlwind of grand adventures and I can't believe it's coming to an end so quickly. While I was first exploring the CMU website in my final year of high school, I stumbled across the scholarship and bursary section. I didn't see ones that I necessarily thought I was qualified to apply to, um, but I saw the leadership scholarship and thought I'd take a stab at that. Now I'm the first to admit that I'm not the most assertive of people. In my application essay, I actually said that I'm ill-fitted to be a leader and I would much rather serve than do anything else. <laughs> Um, despite this, I ended up receiving the scholarship, for which I am truly grateful. Um, it came at a cost. That cost is, people think I'm a leader. <laughs> um, even though I spent the next few years writing more essays about my failings as a leader, um, my scholarship kept getting renewed and staff and faculty kept recommending me for leadership roles. To my surprise, I actually enjoyed a lot of these. I still struggle with leading meetings, and, but some of my favorite experiences at CMU have been related to the roles I've been voluntold for, ones that at the time I felt wildly unqualified to take on. If after this you can talk to Marilyn and ask her how long it took her to convince me to actually do this speech today. Um, some of these experiences include, but are not limited to, coordinating the on-campus peer-led tutoring service called PAL, marking papers as a writing fellow and talking with students about their ideas, singing in choirs, and finding camaraderie with people who I never would have known otherwise. And as simple as it may sound, working in the library and opening up the world of research to my fellow students. Now this is what I really appreciate about CMU. It provides a wide variety of leadership positions for a range of students in a way that celebrates their unique talents. I truly believe that the leaders of this institution are deeply concerned about my and my peers' well-being after we leave this place. Despite the diversity of our campus and those who make it what it is, the fact that we're here together can't be taken for granted. I was fairly proud of the fact that I made it this far in my speech and only mentioned community once. <laughs> but at this point, I feel like it's inevitable. Because CMU is a community. It's a community that relies on other communities and draws them together. It's unique. There's no denying it. It's easy to be taken for granted as we all become overwhelmed with our own struggles, our busy lives, our essays, our assignments, our papers, our finals. But overall, this is a community that comes together and cares. Today, we stop and recognize those who have either walked these halls before us or who have they themselves become engulfed in the CMU community and want to share that opportunity with others. And so, on behalf of the student body, I want to thank you, all of you, who have contributed to the continuation of this place, whether it be prayerfully, financially, with your time, with your thoughts, Without all the self-sacrificing individuals, or servants, if you will, who contribute to CMU, it would be impossible for others to experience the life-changing opportunities I've had during my time here. So thank you for investing in us, for giving us this precious gift. From students of the past, the present, and those who are still trying to figure out where their unique personalities fit in, we are eternally grateful. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being here today. Yes, I was a student in the 1980s and when mullets were still common and, and hair, was, hair was generous. <clears throat> Back in the day, this was, this was the gym. This is where volleyball practices happened. And uh, if you can imagine that. But it was uh, 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 an, incredibly, in, an incredibly vibrant place uh, where faith was shaped then and it is now. And uh, thank you for the privilege of being here. I was asked to say just a few words uh, around why CMU matters to the church. And CMU matters to the church because it is part of the church. That's how we understand it. <clears throat> it's an arm of the church. CMU was an effort by our Canadian-wide um, conference, Conference of Mennonites in Canada years ago, 
to find a way to train young people for service in the church, not just pulpit ministry, but also lay ministry, leading adult education, helping to give shape to our congregations. <clears throat> and while that has been very, very successful, many CMU students have been leaders in our congregations. We've also noticed two other things that have happened. First, our schools and, uh, and CMU uh, have become an anchor and a reference point for our denomination. An anchor because, because our alumni, the alumni that comes from our schools and continuing education and the various ministry that goes on uh, through the years uh, helps, hold, helps us hold, as churches hold, location for us. It locates us in, in the Christian narrative and helps us to, to stay in our place that we won't drift away as easily. And secondly, it's a reference point for us. When strides ahead are being made, it is often the schools that become the reference point as to how these strides are taken. When indigenous settler relation discussions happen, they happened here before they ever got to our churches. Women in ministry, same thing. <clears throat> and when we began to discuss how we do mission work in various places around the world that is, that is uh, not colonial, or how, uh, what were the colonial overtones, conversations often happen here before they hit our congregations. They, so this school, this school is a reference point for us in terms of how these congregations work and how things work in the congregations. Finally, I would say something else has happened that I don't know if anyone had anticipated before. As schools produce alumni, alumni create ecosystems. In Alberta, where I served for years, uh, lining the Bow River that runs through Calgary, <clears throat> are trees, um, fir trees, Douglas fir trees, black spruce, white spruce trees. Many different varieties of evergreens line the Bow River. Those trees are not native to the prairie region where Calgary is. It's not part of the prairie landscape, those trees. But seeds have been carried down the mountain streams through the prairies, and those seeds have germinated and created a mountain-like ecosystem along the shorelines of that river <clears throat> that are miles and miles away from the mountains. So it is with grads from this place when alumni from here are planted in various places and professions and churches around the country and around the world, it changes the ecosystems, sociological, theological ecosystems of those places. The seeds that take root on the shoreline lead to stable riverbanks, and, and the numbers and varieties of wildlife increases, rainfall increases, so it is with CMU grads that go around the world from here, you create ecosystems around, that, that change the nature of the place where you live and where you serve. <clears throat> Just a couple weeks ago, I got back from Burkina Faso uh, from meetings there, and and we saw again the role, uh, one, of the, one of the churches in the capital city was begun by CMU grads from here, began as a student housing project, turned into a church now, and it continues to thrive and continues to give shape to the denomination. Another student who was part of the Canadian School of Peace Building here a few years ago is now pastoring the Bellevue Church in Bobo de Alasso uh, in, in Burkina Faso, and again, changing the ecosystem of that place. So Mennonite Church Canada invests uh, in, in this place. I, I, I would rather even say, uh, rather than donates, it invests in this place because it grows leaders. This place grows leaders for all areas of the church and it changes the ecosystem of our country and of our world. Thank you and God bless you all. Good morning. My husband Dave and I donate money to CMU annually because it's something of a family tradition. Both sets of my grandparents, Diedrich and Margaretha Peters, and Peter and Annie Schmidt, have scholarships in their names here at CMU, as does my aunt, Viola Schmidt, and my own parents, Paul and Dorothy Peters. I would not be standing here today if it weren't for CMU. My parents met when they were both students here in the early 1950s. They were on the student council together. My mother, the council's lone female member. Mum studied music here and went on to serve the church with her musical gifts for decades, playing the piano and the organ at hundreds and hundreds of weddings, funerals, church services, and choir concerts. Dad became a medical doctor, 
and served the church on a myriad of boards and committees, including the CNBC board, which he once chaired. Although my mother has passed away, dad remains a faithful donor to CMU and maintains his avid interest in the school. He's here today. I met my husband. <laughs> I met my husband, Dave, here at CMU. We were assigned to work together on a presentation about Shakespeare's The Tempest in our English class <laughs> some 48 years ago. And we are still together, doing our best to enjoy life with the same sense of opportunity and adventure that one finds in the plot of The Tempest. Studying at CMU was a life-changing experience for me, not only because I met my life's partner here, but also because it gave me a strong academic foundation on which to build my careers as a teacher and a freelance journalist. CMU helped me become a more critical thinker, a better writer, and it is where I first received inspiration to work as hard as I could to create more opportunities for women to share their gifts in the workplace and in the church. I was a writer for the faith page of the Winnipeg Free Press for quite a number of years. And once a man wrote a letter to the editor and referring to St. Paul's admonition that women should be silent in the church, said that I should not be allowed to express my opinions on the faith page of a newspaper. I wrote a column in response that included examples of women in the Bible who had played an important role in Jesus' ministry and in the early church. I used ideas from a paper called Women in the Life of Jesus, I had written here at CMU for Professor David Schrader's New Testament class. Doc Schrader read my newspaper column, and some 30 years after I had been his student, took the time to send me a letter saying that my article defending the role of women in the church had gladdened his heart. <laughs> Dave and I have two sons, and as teenagers, they each received mentoring and important support from youth pastors at our church. Those youth pastors were both CMU grads. Our sons are also CMU graduates and both had part-time jobs here at CMU for a time. Our one son is now a high school principal and the other is a professional musician and a businessman. And I know that the degrees they received here at CMU and the experiences they had participating in the sports and music programs here provided them with important skills they continue to use in their chosen careers. And I might add that I could say the same thing for our two daughters-in-law, who are also both former CMU students. <laughs> One thing I have noticed about the members of the three generations of our family who have attended CMU is that we all still maintain friendships with people we met while going to school here. I still love coming to CMU. Just the other day, a good friend and I spent a delightful afternoon at the Mennonite Heritage Gallery looking at the current art show created by talented members of Manitoba's many Hutterite communities. Dave and I are regular patrons of the Folio Cafe, and we sometimes bring my dad there for lunch. I have a good friend I meet at the Folio on a regular basis because she says they make the best lattes in Winnipeg. I'm frequently at the Common Word store buying books for the Bethel Mennonite Church Library. I serve as its librarian. The last time I was there, the volunteer clerk who helped me find the books I was looking for was a former CMU classmate of mine. I am looking forward to this year's annual CMU Christmas concert, which is coming up soon. It is always a great way to start the Advent season. A current CMU music student is the pianist for the male choir my husband Dave so enjoys singing in at our church. A former CMU student directs that choir. Two weeks ago, we were at the Nutana Park Mennonite Church in Saskatoon for our granddaughter's child dedication. 
one of the pastors leading the service of blessing for our darling little Clementine was a CMU graduate. I am a donor to CMU because this school has blessed my life and that of my family in many ways in the past. I am a donor to CMU because this school continues to bless my life and that of my family in the present. And I'm a donor to CMU because I want this school to continue to bless my life and that of my family in the future. And I know that in saying that, I speak not only for myself and my family, but for many other people and their families as well. <laughs>